Hey everyone, Shini here. Welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be part four in our senior automation engineer interview question series. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to it and hit the bell icon to get notifications for all my new upcoming videos. So in this particular channel, I'll be giving a lot of useful tutorial sessions on automation, programming languages, the upcoming technologies like AI, machine learning as well. So please do stay tuned for the same. So in this particular session, we are going to look at the part four of the interview question series. So till date, we have covered up three parts and let me show you all what we've covered up so far in a quick recap. So we have covered up so far, like the basic interview questions of explaining about yourself and then what is your daily roles and responsibilities. Then we've also covered the Java theoretical questions, right? And then we covered from where we can practice for Java coding interview questions. Okay, that is what we have covered up so far in this particular document. And I've also shared the links of the areas from where you can get these questions and what of the coding questions are important for you to clear the interview. Today, we're going to progress on the fifth part. That is not fifth part, it's the fifth question, basically. That is the locator's interview question. And how do you practice for it? See, from my opinion, Locators is very important because locator gives an idea to the interviewer that whether the candidate is able to create his or own locator on his own, right? Without taking anyone's help. When I say anyone's help means without using selectors hub or any other such tool. If they have expertise to create a locator on the fly, to create a dynamic locator it means if they ask you a question, okay, create a locator on the fly or dynamically. So you should be able to do that. You need to know different strategies to create locator. This is what they are expecting. Why this is important? Because I've personally worked in multiple different automation frameworks for multiple companies. And it is really critical that how you are able to create a locator. If you are well versed with that, no matter how complex the application or different applications in the project could be, you will be able to find a way for it. And that is why these strategies are so important. And there are different locators. We will look at all the different locators in today's session. So let's look at the different locator categories. So we have one type as ID. We have one type as class, class name basically. Then we have one attribute as name. Then we have CSS selector. Then we have XPath, right? Then we have link text, partial link text. So these are the few popular different types you can say. And we have also got tag name. Okay, these are the popular types of locators which you can have for a Selenium automation tool. Now, these locators are basically like, uh, how do you identify some element? So I've taken an example of Amazon website. So let me go to Amazon and I'll close the other videos, other tabs. Yeah. So let's say that we have this Amazon website. Okay. Now here we have got so many different elements. You can see there is a cart icon, right? There is a sign in button. Then there is a start here. We have images. We have this text. All of these are called web elements within a web page. Because see, this is a web application. And inside this application, you are having this home page. If I click on some link, let's say cell, it is going to take me to the cell page, right? So this is another page. So this redirection helped us to come to this page, right? So now we need to first identify what are the different ways we can identify such web elements. So I've mentioned here these different types of locator. So let's try to look at what are locator first of all. If someone is completely new to locator, this will help you to understand. Okay, let me take an example. So let me say, for example, I want to identify this image. Let me do right click. Just do right click and do inspect. Or you can do function plus F12 key in your keyboard. So let me click on inspect here. And like this kind of a panel will be opened up, which will have elements opened up by default. Similarly, uh, ones who are interested to know what is happening in the API calls, they can go to network tab and they can look at these different calls like fetch XHR, right? So this will show what all API calls are happening in the background. 
okay just show your knowledge perspective now in the element section if you see this is getting highlighted if i hover on this particular thing right this particular tag called img it is giving me highlighting this area okay if i go to the anchor tag it is again highlighting something else right like this way you will be able to identify what is the element we are trying to highlight so let me just copy this new launches this attribute okay i'll copy it and i'll just say okay, don't worry uh, so if i say just say new matches it is saying two matches from see so let me try to check what are the matches so this is one match it is highlighting overall and then there is some another dynamic content getting you know not getting highlighted but it is getting found in the current web page so this is confusing right because you are getting two matches from so how do you use this particular image if you want to use it in your automation script so you should ideally get only one match only then your automation script will not have any ambiguity to decide which element to interact with right so this is what xpath and the other locator types are helping us to do they will be able to give us one match and that is a technique which you need to understand how can we get only one match or a unique match so let's get started so let's say i want to uh, identify this cell okay so this cell is a hyperlink if you see here if i go to the right side this cell is a text but it is not a text it's actually wrapped within a hyperlink because the tag is a an anchor tag so if i want to identify this anchor tag uniquely i can say just cell but i'm getting 350 26 matches from right so this is not going to be the one which i want to use so let's say i'm now mentioning a tag because this is a an anchor tag right so i'm just mentioning the tag name here which is a anchor tag see anchor tag for hyperlink and i'm giving one bracket here this is a syntax for css selector by the way i'm just giving text equal to or not even text equal to let's say i want to go for some attribute let's say href href equal to i'm just giving some value uh let's just again highlight cell okay and let's copy this this particular content which is inside the href attribute this is the attribute value for cell and let's enclose it within this one okay so we have got only one match found now so this is the way of css selector so i'll explain the syntax and all css selectors there are different types i've just given a very basic example this is a very basic example that let's talk about the first one that tag name attribute equal to value so this is the syntax for css selector okay so likewise for css selector there is another way we can just say uh i'll just show you so now let's say i want to identify this class right nav hyphen a so i can say a then dot nav hyphen a so do you see here we have got 39 matches found for this particular example right so we are having here tag name dot and what is the value for this this is the class attribute class right this is a class attribute right so i'm saying class so if you see an example here this is the example because the tag name here is anchor tag and this is the value for the class like this there are so many different types of locators which are there in selenium which you need to understand i have just given a very few examples here and let me give you another example that is tag name means for id we have to use this pound symbol and give the value for id so let's check for something else which is having id let's say card for example yeah we have id here see so i'm going to copy this value and i'm going to say span is a tag name and then i'm going to give the value so we have got the unique match if you do just do enter you can see it's getting highlighted right so this is how locators are so important for you to be able to be able to form your own locator so we have started with css selector as a first category within the locators and like that 
the another one is id directly you can use id also like i need not go for css selector i can directly say nav cart count so when you use the automation script you will come to understand like you come to know like how to use this nav cart count so we have a attribute called identifying an element by id so that is when we will be able to use this directly similarly we had seen the other type as class name right so you can see we have got a class. So I'm just going to see this as class so that it is not confusing. So we can directly copy this also and we can paste it here, right? So this is the second type. We can go for class. Then we would sometimes have this name attribute. So let me say, see if this anywhere a name attribute. Let me just do one thing. because there's no name attribute present here. Let me look at this one. Yeah, so like class, there will be something called name. That is what we call it as a name attribute. So we have so far seen ID, class, name, and CSS selector. So we'll stop here. And the next tutorial, the next tutorial session on the locator for the series will cover XPath, link text, partial link text, and tag name in complete detail. So that will be a complete masterclass session. And you will understand all the different locators uh, high level and I will have another session which I'll create only for XPath which will cover all the types of XPath. So stay tuned for my next video. Thank you so much and please do subscribe to my channel if you have not done yet. Thank you.